Hey guys, how's it going? Five Finger Shuffle back here with another video, and today we are going to test Kendrick. It is laundry day. Today is part three of our laundry day test series. Part three of three. Uh, the other two, if you didn't already see them, were the Dark Dino Kid and the Fire Vampire. Uh, basically what we do is we try them out in some different situations and see what happens, uh, including some different gear. So currently, he's on a mixed hybrid build, attack, crit damage, HP, uh, with warding, precise, and vital. So he actually has pretty good stats, so he's got 53k HP, 76 crit rate, 156 crit damage, with just a little under 100% attack. So what I want to test today, he also has 65 accuracy. What I want to test today is I want to test him like this, and I want to test him on an attack crit damage attack build with adept and high accuracy. And I want to compare the two and see what's better. I also want to see uh, what is going to be better if you run him or if you run a rota with a defense break. I'm not a big fan of Kendrick. Personally, I don't like him. I don't know why people like him. I don't get it. Um, that being said, we're going to test him out. We're going to give him a fair shot. We're going to see what happens. You never know. So, in order to test this properly, first of all, I don't want to die. So, we're going to put him in there. We're going to run... So, for, I want to take him out. This is why. Her out, I mean, sorry. So, obviously, if we're running Rhoda, we don't want her buff to affect only one of the damage dealers, because we're running Malika, we're running the Scion, and we're running him, and we're running Rhoda. So, all of these units will do decent damage. The Rhoda is not on attack build, so I'm not worried too much about her. Um, but if we put the Fairy in here like this, she will not only get the attack buff, but she will also get the attack speed buff, making her really strong. So, to try and keep the playing field equal, we're going to just be worried about attack buff defense break on the Malika and on the Scion, as well as the Pirate. We're using the Rota leader skill, so that'll just decrease the cooldowns, let everybody do their thing. We'll do this run, and then we'll switch his gear, and we will see what happens. So I figured this was a nice way to put this to rest. Basically, we're going to do three different attempts. We're going to try this team. Now, just to be clear, first of all, this is we're not trying to pre-flight the boss here. This shouldn't pre-flight the boss because we have no ongoing damage. Uh, this is just a pure damage comp. We're just testing how much damage does he do, how fast are the runs, how does it affect everything. So you can see we, we're going to count the flyby goes at 14 seconds. So we're going to keep track of all this and see when the flyby is, when the boss comes up, and when we get the uh, final kill. All right, so boss came up at 31 seconds. And now we'll say when he flies away. So he flew away at 42 seconds. And now we have to wait for him to land again before we can do the final time. Uh, but that's fine. That'll be the same in all of these runs. If we added ongoing damage to this, then it would reduce the runtime by a lot just because we would pre-flight the, the boss. But that's not our goal here. We just want to test pure damage and that's it. Uh-oh. Are we going to get a crash right in the middle of our test? Really? Come on, Game Loft. You can do it. Crank up those engines. <laughs> All right, it seems like we're back. All right, so he's landing. And then this should be a pretty quick kill. We're not gonna kip, push skip. We're gonna take the final time at the end screen. So the final time is a minute and 26 seconds. Let's 
check the damage report. So as expected, the Scion was first with 605. The Blade Master was second with 515. Roto was third with 195. And then Kendrick was third with 155. All right, so let's go change his gear. And we will keep the exact same comp and we'll run the exact same thing and we'll compare it with what just happened. And then what I want to do is I actually want to do another pure damage run without him at all uh, and run a mojo instead and compare what happens. Because I, I don't understand why anybody would run him in a comp, really. <laughs> So I hope I can say after this I'm wrong, but I, I'm not a believer. All right, so we're gonna strip all of this and we're gonna put it on somebody else just so I don't forget where it was. So we're gonna take the two vital pieces. Let's put them on this fire scion here. Uh oh, which one was it? I have no idea. Uh, crit, crit rate, HP, accuracy, probably, I would guess. And then this was the HP one. That's an easy one. All right, let's do the warding pieces next. That's crit rate, crit damage, accuracy. And crit rate, crit damage, uh, those two are relatively easy. So switch to warding. That was a nice piece there, that legendary one. Crit rate, attack speed, move speed. Not too bad. Uh, so this was the attack one. And then finally, no. Where'd he go? Finally, we'll take off the precise pieces. This one was just tanky stats. I don't know why that's on there. I'm sure I could do better. And then the crit damage precise piece. Again with move speed. He has a lot of move speed. It's very strange. Um, and where was that move speed piece? And we can probably, yeah, this piece is probably better. So we're going to use this one when we come back. We won't even bother equipping it because it's not worth it. All right, so let's find a adept set. We want to go attack with damage attack. Ideally. It's going to be here. We'll start with this. And then we need a crit damage one. Ugh. Can see this is going to be an issue. Who else do we have? We literally just pulled one too, but it's we don't have anything good for this slot. Unless we can find a precise one. We could just use the precise one that was already on there, couldn't we? Let's just take this one. At least we know it's maxed and it's got crit rate. Hopefully when I go to put these back, I don't have troubles trying to find that piece because that would be really annoying. All right, precise, crit damage, beautiful. And 
And that's not the best piece. Let's see if we have one on Adept. We have a few, but nothing crazy. Uh, let's use this one. So now we just have to fill these with Adept with high crit rate. Uh, he does ascend into crit rate, so that makes that really easy. Uh, he's only got 20 accuracy though, so we need crit rate and accuracy substats. Hopefully we can fill these spots without going anywhere to strip these pieces. Crit rate HP, crit rate crit damage, that one's got crit rate and accuracy. And attack speed, that's not bad. Accuracy and crit damage, crit rate and accuracy again. All right, we'll use this one. And then finally, actually let's check where we are now. 37, that is not enough accuracy, but Luckily, our Rota has pretty high accuracy, so we won't have a problem with defense breaks. If we do, we will run it again. Okay, let's run this one. That'll help. All right, that's not bad. I can live with that. So 52% accuracy, 82% crit rate, 132 crit damage with 100, or sorry, with 1850 attack. And now that he's on Adept, he should be able to spam his ultimate. Oh, which reminds me, I should show you this. Um, we'll be able to spam his ultimate and his defense break more often. And also, his these two skills are both max skilled. So they are max damage, minimum cooldown. This one still can do better on the cooldown, and this one better on the damage. But for now, it's probably going to be as good as it gets. So let's come back here. We'll do the exact same run and we will compare all the same stats we had before. So the first milestone we hit on the first one, it took us 14 seconds for the dragon to fly by. So let's check, check when the flyby is. Now obviously there is some RNG that plays into this. Um, it won't always be like the exact same. There's nothing we can do about that. We could do a bunch of runs and test it, but we're just looking for a general guideline. Even if it's like a little bit worse, we're not gonna say it's way worse. Um, we can just assume it's equal. I was talking too much and I missed that. <laughs> I feel like that was slower. We may have to do this run twice. All right, there's, what's the time here? 32, so that was one second slower. The next one was 42. All right, so we threw up 43, which is one second slower. We got a little more damage on the boss, but the times have been virtually identical, just one second slower on each. The final finish time was a minute 26 on the clock when it finished. We're not going to bother running it again for that first time um, if these all stay consistent because it really doesn't matter that much like even if it was within a second we can assume that the change in builds really didn't do him any good all right he's back so we're looking at a minute 26 he looks like we're actually going to finish this a little bit faster yeah we managed to finish at 123 so he took three seconds off the clock Let's check the damage report. So the damage report changed a little bit this time. The Scion dropped way down to 476 damage. The BM moved up a little bit to 544. The Rota was the exact same at 195. And Kendrick jumped up from 155 to 202. 
So basically, Kendrick stole the damage from the pirate. Let's run that one more time just to check in, check in on it. And then I want to compare this these times to like a, a more standard comp that I would use without the Kendrick in there. Not a more standard comp. Just like a safer comp that... I mean, this is never going to die, I guess, because we do have the... Uh, we have the healer in there with, and the shield with the Archangel. But... I mean, really, I just don't think... Because you're running a Rota already, I just don't see the purpose behind running a Kendrick. Because really, only the only thing you need him for is the attack buff. He's not there for damage. As you can see, he was the lowest damage until the last run. He was the lowest damage because he beat Rhoda by 7 damage. But Rhoda's not even on a full attack build. She's on attack speed with HP and attack. Alright, so he flew at 45 seconds, which is 2 seconds slower. Uh, we did almost pre-flight the boss crazy enough without ongoing damage, which is pretty impressive. But we are, again, the two times were a minute 26 the first run, a minute 23 the second run. So let's see what our finish time is here. I'm really mostly interested in the damage report. So this run's gonna be a little bit slower, not but not much. So what's that? Back to the yeah, back to 126. So same as the first run. Let's check this damage report. So the this one, the Scion is up five thousand damage, the BM is down significantly to actually the worst damage that, that she's done so far. And the Rota's way up, and the Pirate is still basically identical. So, but you can assume the Pirate jumps from about 150k damage to about 200k damage. Um, and the other damage dealers, depending on where the champs are, are going to distribute the damage a little bit more. So, like I said, I don't particularly like him. I don't think he does that much for you. So let's see what the times are like and the damage is like when we don't use them. And then that'll be the end of the video. So we take him out. We don't really need him. Let's plug in a five star mojo. In this particular comp, I probably wouldn't use him. I would probably use the fairy just because I'm going more attack speed and attack speed makes more sense in this comp so this is what I would end up running if I was just going pure damage um, I mean there's really no need for the Archangel anymore other than the small heal but we'll leave him in there just to keep the team as comparable as possible you could run a healer in here if you want this to now you could run a healer in here if you want this to be safe um, because with the defense buff, you're not dying anytime soon. There aren't a lot of nature healers, but you could run like a water magical girl and that would be fine. Or a Xenia or uh, a Zircon, I guess it would be good as well. But mainly this is just to show how little you need Kendrick. Um, this kind of confirms what I was thinking is the runs are the exact same time. Nothing changes whether he's on we already confirmed that he doesn't. nothing changes whether he's on an attack build or a hybrid build. So I will be putting that gear back no matter what. The next question is, how different is this run from the last run? Because really, we took out damage because we put in a 5-star Mojo in place of him. The only thing that Mojo does is the attack buff, and we don't really need the defense break because we have Rhoda. Assuming Rhoda lands her defense breaks, of course. But... If she lands her defense breaks, these this should be virtually identical. I didn't look at that time, but the next time we're looking at when the boss comes up should be about 32 seconds. So it says 36, so it's 4 seconds slower there. 
The flyby or flyway is at 43, which is only one second slower. Same time, it's actually only one second slower than the hybrid build. It's the same time as the uh, the other build, the attack build. We didn't do as much damage, obviously, on the boss there, so we have long we have longer ways to go until we finish them. Which means that the run might be slightly slower. We can always try it again, though. Alright, so he comes back down at 120. Yeah, I mean, the odds of finishing this instantly are not very good, but that was pretty fast. I mean... What is, what's that going to give us? 129. So that was only 3 seconds fast... Sorry, 3 seconds slower than both of our comps is three seconds and we took out a bunch of damage and put it in a five star mojo so we're gonna run it one more time just to be safe just in case we run like a two minute run or something but long story short you don't need the vampire i mean i keep saying vampire i i said this in the last video and i keep getting the vampire and the pirate confused for some reason i don't know why i'm doing it i apologize i'm sure i've done it both a lot in last video and this video because i if I caught myself doing it, I'm sure I did it a lot more. Um, so yeah, I apologize. But it just show, it goes to show you, you really don't need Kendrick. You don't need the pirate. It's He doesn't really do all that much. You already have the defense break from the Rota. Which means that, like, what's the, what's the point of bringing in someone that defense breaks, right? You really just need an attack buff. Technically, Cassandra is probably, in this particular comp, Cassandra might even be better... Because she attack breaks and heals. Or sorry, attack buffs and heals. You could bring her in and bring another damage if you wanted to. So that was what, 42 seconds? Yeah, it was the same time he flew away. It was one second faster than last run. And the same time as our first run with the hybrid, um, the hybrid Kendrick. So this is going to be pretty close. We're going to be around that 125 to 130 mark again, which I think confirms what I was saying. I might try, we might try one more thing. I have, so I have a Cassandra. She has no gear on her. But what if we went Cassandra and... Is that going to tick to 127? No. 126. So exact same time as with the Pirate. It was the, the 126 finish time. Um, and we took him out in favor of Mojo. Let's, just for fun... If you're, worried, if you're looking for more Mojo testing, we're done with... Or sorry, if you're looking for more Pirate testing, we're done with him. Uh, the only place I really see a use for him is in co-op. Uh, where you need, like, element advantage units or... You need another defense break and you've already used your rota or something like that that's the whole reason he's still geared and also the whole reason i have him on a hybrid build is because i need him tankier um but out of curiosity let's try this so she has an attack raise a lower defense she has no gear on her to be clear so we may potentially die but if we don't die we're gonna beat it and it should be faster Fingers crossed, I mean, she also doesn't get the cooldown reduction, so we might not get enough attack buff. But uh, I'm just curious to see what happens. This could be a massive fail to end the video, but I'm not cutting it out. <laughs> we'll get through the waves fine, because we have so much damage. The question is, will we survive when the boss flies away? Potentially, if we put either a Siege Tower or a Snake Lady in here, instead of the Scion, we could potentially pre-flight. So he flew by at 15 seconds, which is one second slower than our fastest pirate run. The next milestone is 31 seconds, which was the fastest pirate run at the boss landing. So it's 34, it's a little slower. 
I think it's just because we're missing some attack buffs in there. Like, we don't have a full-time attack buff. Oh, we almost pre-flighted there with a five-star Cassandra with no gear. So, who would you rather have in there? A five-star Cassandra with no gear or a six-star max skill pirate with maxed out adept attack gear? The answer is not the pirate. <laughs> As long as one person survives, we're okay. Obviously she died there, she had no chance. She has element disadvantage and is five star with with no gear. Um, so there you go. Finished up. Minute 25, that was our fastest run out of all the comps that we tried. The fastest run was with a five star ungeared Cassandra and just to prove she has no gear because I'm sure some of you won't believe me there she is boom no gear on Cassandra so there you go I don't see a reason for the pirate I don't care how you gear him because I don't think he's that good and if you are going to build them like I'm going to, I'm going to take this gear off and I'm going to put it, put the old gear back on him purely because I use him as a secondary defense break for co-op. Uh, he's a nice unit for co-op because he does have this bombardment which will break the shields of the boss and then he has the defense break and these can do okay damage. Uh, I actually did a co-op run on, I think it was Epic. I think like whatever I think it was either normal or epic. Yes, yeah, it's epic, right? It's called epic, the lower level one. Anyway, I did a co-op run on epic and used him as the solo damage dealer because I was out of damage dealers, and he worked. Like we made him work. It took a while because he just doesn't do a lot of damage, but all in all, uh, it did get the job done because he does the shield break and the attack buff and the defense break. Uh, he's great for epic co-op. He can be used in the other co-ops as well if you have the right comp. Uh, I just don't really see a use for him in the rest of the game because if you're running him, you also have a Rota. And if you have a Rota, you've already got a defense break. So unless you have your Rota really poorly geared, in which case you probably don't have a pirate anyway, um, I just don't see the point. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. If you did like the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you hate me and you love your pirate, I'm very sorry. Um, but I know a lot of people out there don't even have him yet, and they desperately want him. I hope this shows you guys that he's really not necessary. Um, we tried a couple different builds on him, and there's just other alternatives out there. He can do the job, but he do, you don't need him. So anyway, have a great night, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon with another video. Bye.